absolute values and square roots kind of go hand in hand a little bit in the fact that in order for a quadratic it's always going to be positive or it's always going to be negative. It's kind of like an absolute value and with our roots we're talking about quadratics so we're trying to find x by itself and so in order to do that you need to take the square root. So these three things kind of go hand in hand in terms of quadratic equations. Um, to start off with an absolute value This is where your function or your answer, depending on what they're looking for, automatically turns into a positive number. A root is a radical in which you are taking, in this case, we'll be taking the square root of a number. Um, there are different ways that you can have your roots. You could have potentially a cube root, a square root. It just kind of depends. If there is no little two there, just assume that it's a square root. Um, otherwise, it will be denoted with some type of number. So how are we going to use these together? So an absolute value, we know it has to be a positive number. So what is what exactly does that mean? How do we show this? So if I were to have the absolute value of negative 3, my answer is only 3. If I were to have the absolute value of positive 3, my answer is still 3. Either way, no, regardless of what number you put inside the absolute value bars, it will come out as a positive number. And that can be shown with the graph. Okay, this is just going to be a rough sketch here. Um, this is my coordinate plane. The absolute value graph, it kind of looks like a quadratic except that it's a true V where quadratic is more rounded uh, towards the vertex there. But this is the graph of our absolute value function showing that the Y values are always in the positive direction no matter what our X value is. So with square roots, let's say that I have the absolute value of x squared and that equals 16. So here's where the absolute value comes into play. We know that the square root of a square is going to cancel everything out. But what we don't know or what we need to know is that any number underneath the root must be positive. Okay, so that is the key here. Um, horrible example, I actually didn't want that square there. But regardless, we're going into this part underneath the root must be positive. So in order to have x squared equal 16, I'm going to have to square root both sides. This is where I'm getting at. So I have x equals 4. The trick is, is it a positive and negative 4? It just depends. Um, if you're going to do this, in this case, when we square it, it will turn into a positive. But that's not always the case, and that's why you need to be cautious. Um, about what you're doing with your square roots and your absolute values.
So that leads into our absolute value square root theorem. So for all real numbers, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. We just talked about that underneath root must be a positive number. Um, the other thing they're going to actually have you come back to is talking about rational and irrational numbers. Remember that a rational number can be made into a fraction. It can also be a positive or negative, where an irrational cannot be made into a fraction. So for instance, the square root of 2 equals 1.41 and it just keeps going. Where with a rational number, if I have the square root of 36, this is going to be plus or minus 6. And that can be made into a fraction. <laughs>